This is IBM Museum. And in this video, I'm going to be talking a little bit about adapters made by a company called Attachmate. And there's even a little bit of um, company history I'll go through from there as far as uh, it relates to some of the other adapters that we've seen from DCA uh, and even relating towards the, the IBM product as well. And I'm gonna get turned around. Let me see, I'm gonna probably turn off that, get focused just on, so I have the full field of view uh, for, the, for the camcorder. And I've got some of the eight bit, three eight bit adapters from attachment towards the top here of the bench. Uh, and then I've got a, a microchannel version and I've repaired this this front uh, guide to it. It actually glued it back. I need to put some material in there from my, um, just use a little bit of plastic glue and glue a bump in there to kind of keep this a little more secure. But surprisingly enough, the um, what looks to be the earliest attachment um, adapter that I have is um, the microchannel version. These older 8-bit versions, and we'll look at them in just a moment, appear to be um, produced, at least produced a little bit later on. Now, all of them do have this. I don't know if I should have done that from, well, I don't even know if that helps, if I can even tone that down so we don't get as much of a reflection but we still have a little bit of the light so all these boards are marked as the um, attachment corporation in Bellevue Bellevue uh, Washington and that's Washington State Made in USA 1989, and the attachment uh, logo. This has a, the serial number, and even for a microchannel board, it does have um, some of the, the switches, uh, physical switches on there. And as it mainly relates is that there, um, it kind of masquerades a little bit at one of the IO addresses, that E7FF is effectively the same as the IBM adapter, the IBM coax adapter. And uh, by this, I was seeing, I was looking through on chip, on the date codes on chips, and maybe, yeah, I was seeing, I thought I was seeing 1989, late in 1989 and early 1990. I mean, that, that 74 S10N is the fifth week of 1990. So, you know, a few years after the um, PS2s came out with the microchannel bus, um, but this is the, the oldest attachment adapter I have. Um, even the 8-bit boards look very similar in functionality. They're, they'd be effectively the same um, for um, even an ultimately an ISA bus that, wouldn't, that would even have more than just even an 8-bit connector, although those boards are just 8-bit. Now, and then it's labeled on this, this big chip, attachmate, and then it's got this... Uh, 252 and then the dash 00300 and I don't know what all the Adam stuff and everything else it's got a marking from NCR on there as well uh, for whatever that means as we'll see that a little bit more uh, prevalent on the 8-bit uh, adapters and then we do see uh, it has a switch this one down at the bottom goes between the coax or the RJ11 as you have the, the back breakouts and they 
have these this marker and I even think I have a few of these stickers loose with this the slash over the telephone that to show that hey this is not uh, where you connect up your telephone cabling into this adapter or uh, the line the landline that you had your phone system um, uh, ca the cabling for your phone you didn't plug it into that although they did in that instance of the RJ11 use you know some of the cabling um, although it would have been unshielded twisted pair ultimately um, with that cabling as we learned in that in that uh, Balin discussion in a previous video and the RJ11 being the necessarily the unbalanced side of that the coax being the um, well I mean the twin X is the balanced side since it has two conductors and then even that RJ11 is looks like it has a switch for a kind of like a crossover or straight through kind of like your MIDI and MIDI X uh, destinations later on in the Ethernet side and just however they did that cabling to reverse the so-called um, maybe that tip and ring signal or something to that effect in there now we have seen um, connectors on the coax world um, with the um, also with the RJ11 jack these are the that DCA flip adapter all the four that I have back there in the corner and that did also have that RJ11 connector uh, in addition to the coax. And I don't think that there's necessarily um, switches on this on how the um, how the this module on the back was, um, you know, it would be flipped depending if you used it. 8 bit or the micro channel bus, uh, but th both of those seem to be wired on that little module. I don't know if there's some way to set uh, in the end of the connector style that you had um, or the cabling that you had um, at that location or what with those, but it is a switch effectively on the uh, attachment uh, adapters. Now, this is the earliest 8-bit um, board I have. And, um, I mean, it's even marked as serial numbers. I don't know if that uh, necessarily specifies or is an indication uh, that's reliable enough for uh, determining the, um, effectively, the age or the years produced. But the same sort of marking, that attachment made in USA, copyright 1989. And um, and then uh, Bellevue, Washington, uh, again. So that same sort of switch blocks um, to be crossover straight through for the RJ11 connection and um, a switch between the, the coax and the RJ11 um, down closer to the coax connector. Same thing with that slash through the phone sticker. Uh, don't use that, you know, connected to your phone uh, system cabling. And the the chip there is actually marked as um, the the big chip is marked as NCR in this case, and then to a lesser extent attachment, and it has a, a different sequence. It's two five two dash one uh, zero one four nine five and all the other uh, eight bit adapters have that same two five two dash zero one four nine five chip effectively and then the bigger eight pin switch block i think that's eight pins if i'm counting no more than eight pins um ten pins and so that's uh, apparently some different uh, settings the board can have. And but for all that functionally equivalent to the microtron board, and there's also the stickers of the T, the green T1, 
And I had one sticker that was loose. I think it's from the middle of the, of the um, 8-bit adapters. Um, but the microchannel board even has the that T1 sticker on uh, the chip. And I don't have any labels for any of the um, uh, versions, basically, of this uh, of this mass grom, maybe. And there's no uh, version identifier on either of those socketed chips. Uh, but when we get to the two other 8-bit adapters, there's a version numbering. Um, and these even have, you know, the same attachment, made in USA, 1989. Um, and then the, the big chip goes to being attachment, but still has that same effective number. And they have a shield that's over the, the top of the switch block. And I don't know if that was put on by the customer in. Um, two of the adapters I have are very close in serial number, the one behind is just a little bit later in the sequence, in that middle sequence, um, by just eight, you know, um, uh, um, in between, ultimately from the um, from the zero three four to the zero four two. I guess I have the 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 higher number serial number um, in on the front here. And um, it's got the same sort of uh, everything otherwise to that. Probably was in the same uh, location bought by the same customer. And yeah, you can see where that, that little circular T1 has fallen off, that label has fallen off that one chip. But these boards, and I think these were produced um, relatively close together I was even seeing uh, surprisingly dates on the chips that even looked into um, 19, um, I thought it was even as late as, well that has a, okay, so yeah, 90, like a 95, the 19th week. Um, that is 95, the 19th week uh, is what it looks like to me of what I'm, yeah, and even on that uh, Cypress chip there, the 21st week of 1995. And you think as far as um, ISA board, I mean, excuse me, even 8-bit um, adapter board, you think 1995 is a, is a relatively um, late release for anything like this. I think even the earliest 8-bit adapter I had, I think this one was even like a 1993. Okay, 92, the 45th week of 1992. Um, it looks like this is the kind of towards the end of 1992, which is still in itself, that's a rather late um, date for all it's worth. Now, the attachment stuff itself, um, it's it's kind of interesting from, from the company perspective side that, um, and, this first part of this is from Lewis Olin. He went through and and uh, tracked down a little bit of information. Although I did find a um, a site as well, and this hyperleap hyperleap.com. It seems like it's a search um, area where you put in um, uh, just search terms and it goes through and finds the terms for links that have been posted out there on the web, I guess. And just kind of shows maybe what's um, trending in a way or I don't know um, otherwise of of how um, it, it really ranks um, that. Uh, it's just, it, that's what I got in the search for this information when well, I searched for like Irma 
and Forte and DCA and Attachmate. And um, so the uh, it's just a description of some of these links out there. Um, and as I worked my way through, and then here's like a attachment, a, a hit for attachment, and uh, DCA of Alpharetta, uh, Alpharetta, Georgia was acquired in 1994 by Attachment Corporation of Bellevue, Washington. And um, DCA was also known for its 3270 Irma hardware product used for SLDC. That's that synchronous data link connector, I think. Um, and um, then there's a hit for the Digital Communications Associates, or DCA. Uh, Irma boards were invented by Technical Analysis Corp, TAC, acquired by Digital Communications Associates, or DCA, who manufactured and marketed the Irma products from 1982 on. Um, in 1981, under the leadership of Bertie Norden, DCA acquired Technical Analysis Corporation, TAC, the makers of the Irma board, which enabled PCs to function as 3270 terminals on uh, to a an IBM mainframe host. And you really think about it, I mean, the PC itself came out in 1981. So um, that was probably just where the PCs were just a, a new product and... Um, Maybe somebody had a little bit of foresight and think that IBM developing a personal computer that they'd want to make a, a board that, you know, could link into an IBM mainframe as well. Um, and then there's hits uh, for that crosstalk um, and I guess the address and everything. Um, Okay, and that's much a lot, uh, kind of a definition of that personal computer. We see the IBM 3270 PC being listed. Um, that's just a model. Um, and I, I guess these links, I don't know if it, you click on them, though, where they'd go um, probably probably to where the the uh, hy this hyperleap.com picked them up. Um, just descriptions of kind of this, uh, even on the Macintosh side of uh, connecting um, those, uh, having adapters that connected onto IBM host. Um, that's a lot of the same. That's from IBM, it looks like. There's some links that were further down. There's this Omdel Corporation. Um, a board with all the with all the capabilities of that which would eventually be called Irma was originally developed in-house by Amdahl Corp, uh, Corp in 1977, but was not actively marketed by Am, um, Amdahl. And um, I mean that's even preceding the PC. Um, Uh, terminal emulation. There's uh, more of the Irma. Um, I think that's as much informatics. Okay. And informatics general. The products generally communicated to the mainframe over Irma boards or the Forte package. Because I think Forte was um, ultimately um, a company, I guess, um, as well. Because I have it from um, Lewis Olin that he said that um, DCA bought Forte and um, Irma... Then attachment bought DCA in, he had said in 1995, but as we saw in the reference here, it, that it was listed as 1994, whatever's right. 
And then I found another link. It said attachment was acquired by Microfocus even in, oh, in, uh, in 2014. And I guess there was even still some stuff of the, some products that were a little bit newer, even in the 2018 timeframe and stuff like that. But for this case, um, attachment buying DCA in 1994, then we see the, these, um, um, eight bit adapters and that even that, uh, that micro channel adapter being a little bit, uh, older as it were um but those being produced even in that that time frame in 1994 1995 um really amazing for me to to think that a, an 8-bit board was still being um developed and and put together in 19 um in 1995 for the markings i have and who knows how long that uh that production lasted um, to go through and do that. And I mean, you're probably talking to the point where I'm trying to remember when PCI um, came into to place and things like that. But um, I guess there's still those old, um, you had 16, the 16 bit slots, ISA slots, and uh, you could use an eight bit adapter in there. Um, you know, if the software ran on your system, uh, certainly you could go through and uh, do that 3270 uh, terminal emulation. So that was a little bit of the, that's a little bit of the history um, to the attachment stuff as well as, well as looking over the, um, the adapters that were produced there. And all of those adapters, be it, the 8-bit or the micro channel, they look functionally equivalent. And um, there may be a, a chance later on, I'll get that uh, uh, one of those plugged into a, a system and um, see what I can do, even for that micro channel board, uh, basically emulating or having that same adapter ID, if you set the switches right, of that E7FF. Or you could switch it over and have it to a more advanced uh, adapter description file uh, with more capabilities, and those those ADF files for both the um, the um, that um, appearing like it was uh, an IBM adapter of that um, that E7FF ID, and then one of the the switch block is it's listed as reserved. But then that uh, that six seven seven F ID that's the pretty much the the native ADF for this for this board to gain the true capabilities, not just have it look like a an IBM um, adapter appear to the system as an IBM adapter um, of matching that um, that adapter ID. So. If you thought that this um, video was informative, you learned something from it, you liked it, click on that like button, please, and subscribe to my channel if you have not done so already. Invite your friends to subscribe as well. I can always use more subscribers, but that's all I have for now. This is IBM Museum. Thank you.